And now your main event, introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling with Freddy. Mr. Jackpot Jeff Dye is stuck in Naples, Florida because you keep buying tickets to his shows and stealing my friend. Now to wrestling news. There are all new men and women's Money in the Bank winners. Is WWE finally looking ahead to create new stars? This and more on today's Wrestling with Freddy. What's up, everybody? How are you? I miss Jeff. You know, the last time I got to see Jeff was at Wrestle or the Raw after WrestleMania. We went to WrestleMania together too. But that's the last time we've seen each other face to face because stand up comics live a life on the road. It's like being friends with a pro wrestler. You're friends with their phone more than you are the person. But when you get to see him, it's always big love, man. It's got to be what it was like to have like a, a parent that was a traveling salesperson back in the day. See that salesperson? This is going to be an all money in the bank episode. Although, you know, I got love for AE dubs too. I've done all AE dubs episodes, so don't get upset. And don't forget, we got Thursday's bonus episode as well, where I'm going to make uh, some pretty cool announcements from the Premier Streaming Network, which I'm a co owner in. We bring indie wrestling and almost bring the territory system back to the digital age. But we're going to be having our first championship match. I'm not going to announce the contestants yet, the wrestlers yet, contestants. They're not on Wheel of Fortune, Freddy, dumbass. But I do have some announcements there as well, so stay tuned for that and more on Thursday's show. Let's get right into it. Men's Money in the Bank, ladies and gentlemen. Damian Priest, Santos Escobar, L.A. Knight, Shinsuke Nakamura, Ricochet, Logan Paul, and the U.K.'s very own Butch. We know him and love him on this show as Pete Dunne, the finger breaker. The British NXT dude that was awesome when NXT UK debuted on the app. And then he went to NXT and it was pretty cool. And then they lost him a little bit when he got to the main roster, but I think they've found him now. And the help of of Ridge Holland and and Sheamus, and they're all kind of like beating up on him and he likes it. And he's kind of this crazy son of a bitch who he's just willing to fight you. I think it's starting to work. And it wasn't just because of the British crowd. Like I've been seeing him a little bit on the others. You're like, okay, dude, go for it. You got you doing your thing. So he's finding something there and hopefully they can expand and grow on that. But this was not the Butch show. This was the LA night show. First of all, and we said it last week that the British crowd was going to go bananas for this because it wasn't just like a Monday night raw and a SmackDown. They were getting a pay-per-view. It was money in the bank gimmick matches. I was talking last week, how they sing songs. They have cheering songs and booing songs and all these awesome chants. And they hit the WWE wrestlers with all of them (laughs) from, from F you Logan's or Logan F you, whatever it was to we love you, Cody Rhodes. We love you. We love you, Cody Rhodes. I don't know what that song was, but it was awesome. I love the British fans so friggin' much. It's just such a, a, it's tribal, but it's not tribal in like a F you, everything you like sucks kind of way, even though they may feel that way. It doesn't come through. It just comes through like, yo, thank you for coming and we're going to party and you're going to party with us, whether you like it or not. And, and I like it. The, the pandemic really showed me and taught me a valuable lesson of how important the crowd is to professional wrestling. I used to get frustrated with the crowds because of the what chance. And I'd feel like they'd hijack a promo and that prevents talent from getting their best opportunity to move forward and to grow. And I'm still right about that. However, the crowds are (laughs) as necessary as the wrestlers. And I was stupid. And this is just one of the most beautiful examples of epic truth. Notice John Cena didn't come to Puerto Rico and give love. That's interesting. No, I'm just joking. You even got a cameo from John Cena at the Money in the Bank, and he put the crowd over so big. They were yelling so loud the whole night. Michael Cole, if there was a drinking game, and every time he said, I can't hear a word you said, you would have been wasted. The crowd was amazing. So LA Knight comes out, and the crowd goes bananas. But I will say this, everybody got big love except one dude. It's so 
honest at this point that I almost feel bad for the guy because they just, people just hate him. And it isn't people hating up. I, I've heard that before. And there are situations where that happens, but they're not hating up. They're, they hate him. Like they, they, they hate what he represents to so many people. They don't hate success because there's plenty of successful people that don't get that kind of visceral reaction, which is why he's there, by the way. They want, they want that response. And you could see him trying to lean into it, but you can see a part of him too at the same time, whether he's aware of it or not. I don't think it's, a, it's not a choice. I don't think it, his performance is that layered. You could see at times where he's like, dang, man, like that's a little much, but all right. So anyway, they they booed appropriately, right? They have their reasons for for disliking him. You know, to me, he was young and stupid, and I think he's tried to get smarter and then plateaued when he surrounded himself with, you know, like-minded people instead of people that'll challenge his ideas more. But I have found that when people do challenge his philosophies, he does go introspective and he does try to be insightful. And when I see that in people, I believe there's hope. When I don't, then I say no. So the crowd went bananas and really hated him. And then then the match starts and every wrestler in the ring just starts beating the living shit out of Logan Paul. And the crowd is going bananas. They're cheering like, "Ah, we hate you, Logan Paul. We hate you. We hate you so much. Or whatever their songs are. It was amazing. And then they throw him out of the ring and they start having money in the bank ladder match. And they're all doing their thing and doing moves. And then Logan Paul gets back in and they all beat the crap out of him again. We hate you, Logan Paul. We hate you. And I'm dying laughing. I'm texting with Jeff and Alex, our producer, the whole time. Like, oh my God, they hate him so much. This is insane. Then they throw him out of the ring again, which made me think they're beating him so much. Oh my God, is he going to actually win this? Because that's why else would they do that? But it was, I guess it was just for the crowd satisfaction. They decided to give the people what the people want to some degree. The people wanted LA Knight to win, but that didn't happen. However, he got damn close and he has an epic battle up on top of the ladder with Damian Priest and he's about to get it and the crowd knows he's about to win and then Priest runs up the ladder, starts punching him and then he makes the, the reckless mistake that so many before him have made and, and LA Knight's older so he should be a student of the game. You don't go for the briefcase in the middle of a fist fight on the top of a ladder. You'll always lose. You got to make sure you win the fist fight first and then go for the briefcase, you fool, as Gilbert Gottfried used to say on Hollywood Squares. And he was the fool, and he got, I almost said broken arrow. What was that John Woo movie with John Travolta and Christian Slater? You guys love that movie. Shout out to anybody who has the guts to say they love broken arrow. I respect you, even if I don't agree. Anyway, he gets falcon arrowed off of the ladder, takes the bump like a stud. Because he's like 260 a muscle, so he can land like that, and it's nothing. And Damian Priest gets the briefcase and just has a man moment on top where he's like, that's right, yeah, what? The crowd went crazy. They weren't that, even though it wasn't their guy, LA Knight was definitely their guy, and I don't know what his storyline's going to be. We can talk about that more, I guess, because his storyline hasn't been anything but money in the bank. He doesn't really have a storyline with the LWO. Those were just matches in the way and along the way two money in the bank. So I don't know where he goes now. I honestly think if he went after the world heavyweight championship, the crowd would be pissed because the crowd loves Seth Rollins too. I don't know where he goes and I feel like he deserves a top story. I I don't think you save him for Bray because then Bray has to win and the people want to see LA Knight in an A storyline whether it's the title or not, but I think they want to see him in the title picture. So maybe he's what's next for Roman Reigns. But then what do you do with Jay? Because doesn't Jay deserve a shot? I I don't know. It's it's weird. I think they got caught off guard with LA Knight with how quickly he was able to connect with the fans, with how quickly he was able to get himself over. And they just didn't have anything but probably mid-card stuff ready for him because that's as far as they thought he would be allowed to go upon his debut. 
And then if he does well with that, you push him forward. But he's ready for, for the big time. All right, so moving on. And I will say this. After this match, I was really worried that the women's match wasn't going to be able to match that because it's hard to have two Money in the Bank matches. Just like it's hard to have two Royal Rumble matches. But they put enough matches in between and then the women just brought it, and I mean brought it, and we'll get to that match in a minute. Everything was right in the, in the wrestling universe. Okay, so the World Heavyweight Championship, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. Everyone knew, I feel like this was, everyone knew this was going to be a great match. There's no surprises there. It was hard to care as much as I think they wanted us to because he defends it every week, and that's, or at least that's been the promise that, that's been made. And if you're willing to do that, then on a pay-per-view, okay, well, you're going to defend it on Monday Night Raw now, too. As far as caring about the match is tricky. They did something smart, however, and brought the seven-year itch, we'll, we'll call this storyline, of going seven years back when Finn Balor first won the Universal Championship, still the dumbest name for a title ever, in the whole universe. Like, there's not some dude from Jupiter that's just made some, like, living on a gas giant his whole life who just wouldn't split all our guys in two. Come on, man. Universal. Anyway, seven years ago, Finn Balor wins it, but he takes this brutal shot. Seth Rollins picks you up like he's going to power bomb you, and he throws you backwards into the turnbuckle, and it busts your head and whiplashes you. And, oh, oh I'm almost down. One, two, and, oh, but I kicked out. Well, he did this same move on the outside of the ring against the barrier wall, and it just annihilated Finn, like legit. It blasted out his shoulder, his pec, his tricep, back. His neck. It just messed everything up. I'm not a doctor. I don't remember the list of injuries, but it was like three. So the night he wins the championship, he keeps wrestling because he's a gangster like Brian Danielson. Wins the match. Hell yeah, you win that match. Especially when you know you're like, nah, I'm not losing tonight. I don't care how injured I am. The next morning, he has to disclose the injury on like Good Morning America, which was hardcore. And then Monday night, he has to relinquish the title. He doesn't even get to wrestle to give it up. And he has to go have surgery, multiple surgeries. And Seth Rollins comes out while he's walking off stage and he laughs in his face. <laughs> and that laugh stuck with Finn this whole time. He hates Seth Rollins more than anything. He's been stewing on this, even though they haven't shown anything that would lead to him stewing, although I guess you could say that darkness led him to the judgment day, whatever. I'll, I'll let you stretch that if, if you want. So that was the story that they tried to squeeze in here to make you give a crap. And I think they did a pretty good job, even though it was forced. They both made it feel real. They both made it feel, made it feel truthful. Both men came out to the ring. Seth Rollins didn't dress like Elton John. It was awesome. He looked like a world champion. He had the thick, furry black coat but that's nothing wrong with that it's black it's got black in the title so it's you know it's black on black on black my guy comes out to the ring looks like a stud and he gets the whoa he gets the chair for two minutes maybe two full minutes and finn balor sitting there stewing i honestly thought finn was going to jump him because his character hates hearing that cheer and like he did a couple of weeks ago, and then they just have to start the match with some with some quick biting. But he sits there and he takes it. And then the two men had the match. I'm not going to get into details. I mean, they had the match you thought they would have. It was awesome. They both beat the living crap out of one another. And the only thing worthy of note is story wise was that Damian Priest, who won Money in the Bank, comes out to the ring, and it trips out Seth Rollins and it trips out Finn Balor because. These guys are supposed to be boys in the Judgment Day. That's the group that, they, that they're both in and represent. He sits ringside, and he, Seth Rollins is like, what, you think you're going to cash in on me, sucker? You ain't got nothing. Damian Priest is like, I'll cash in on who I want to. Get your bitch ass out of my face. I'd summarize. And then Finn Balor's like, yo, B, what, what are you doing out here? And, and Damian Priest is like, don't worry about it. And he sits there, and all of a sudden, we hit the match finish, and, and it distracts Finn Balor too much, and bang, bang, boom. He gets the one, two, three, and then Finn Balor's hot. He's pissed off. But also remember, he cost, or Damien, if anyway, felt that he cost him a match a few weeks ago, maybe five, five, six weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. So maybe there was a little bit of that, and it was less about the title. So they get some storyline moving forward with some dissension in the ranks. 
Dominic Mysterio losing to Cody Rhodes, which I think everyone knew would happen. Although it would have been crazy if everyone in Judgment Day won and on Monday Night Raw, they just ran shit. That would have been kind of cool too. Dominic lost to Cody Rhodes. Rhea tried to interfere but couldn't, but it seems like Rhea's the only one that's got her shit together until tonight for Damian Priest in the entire group, although Damian's got beef with Finn, so he doesn't have his shit together. He's just on the track to become the world champion. Does he challenge Roman Reigns or do they wait for Roman to lose it to Jay and then he challenges Jay and beats Jay? I don't, maybe that's the way they get there. I don't, I don't know. Cause like Damien and Roman are kind of the same dude, not at the same level, but kind of the same dude, the badass like me or hate me. I'm a baby face or a heel. The crowd decides not me. I'm just playing this guy, this hard ass mother trucker, and you have to deal with it. So I don't know how you put both those guys in the same ring, although I'm sure it's happened before. I just can't think of it. So maybe that's the problem is it's not that memorable. You know, usually you have one badass guy, like hard nosed guy, and then a show off like the, like any Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart match or any stone cold Steve Austin versus the rock match. Like their personalities were always so polar opposite that it made the story more compelling and their styles seemed so different, even if they were similar and they both did the shoulder drops and looked down and all that stuff. It felt different because their personalities were so different. So that was the storyline for them moving forward. Let's get to women's money in the bank. This was a good match. EO Sky. Bailey, their homegirls from Damage Control. For those who don't watch every week, don't forget that. Trish Stratus in her first Money in the Bank match ever. Zoe Stark, her homegirl, her groupie, her mentee. What do you call a mentor's apprentice? A mentee or, an, I guess, an apprentice. Becky Lynch, who she just fights for herself. Friend of the show. We love her. You know her. You love her. Selena Vega who was awesome in this match. And that's everybody that was in there. So there were two factions from EO Sky and Bailey and Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark, and then two solos in Becky Lynch and Zelina Vega. The match starts outside the ring. Trish ain't having it with Becky and sends Zoe Stark out there right away. And they just start fighting outside the ring. And then the match starts and everybody's fighting everybody and everybody's kicking everyone's ass. And you don't know if there's going to be betrayal or not. Vega took some big time like Kofi Kingston type falls like he used to do, same as Santos did in in his match as well. They were showing a lot of just the aerial work, gymnastic work, luchador work. So this match, it was good, but the story in it was what set it apart from the men's match and made it special. So at a certain point, Io Sky is about to win this match, which would be crazy if she did because she hasn't gotten the type of push that you would say, oh yeah, she's a legit contender for the, for the briefcase. And then she's about to win it and Bailey knocks the ladder over. And this is her friend, her home girl, the girl that put damage control together and brought her in. And granted, they've had some mishaps and some conflict in the past, but this is like, I'm about to win. You're going to do me like that. That's dirty. And Wade Barrett on commentary is putting it over. He's like, no, you don't see the the person up there, you just know someone's up there and you knock it over. Don't worry, she's not betraying her. The match keeps going. Eo gets knocked out of the ring. They're fighting. Becky Lynch is beating everybody's ass. At one point, Zoe Stark puts uh, pulls out handcuffs because you're before you freak out, anything's legal in this match, all right? So you could bring handcuffs. You could bring a cricket paddle like Butch did under the ring and beat everybody's ass with it. That was actually really awesome. So Zoe Stark pulled out some handcuffs and she gets the cuffs around Becky's wrist and she's trying to handcuff her to the turnbuckle because as you know, in Money in the Bank, if you can't climb the ladder, you can't get to the briefcase. And if you can't get to the briefcase, you can't win shit. And so this is a smart strategy from Team Stratisfaction. She's trying, she's trying, she almost gets her hooked up and then no, sir, bam, she takes the right hand and Becky fights back, beats her ass. She has some more moments. There's one moment where she fish hooks, I think it's Bailey with the handcuffs, the free one that's, that's uncuffed, fish hooks her in the mouth and pulls her off the ladder with it. That was really awesome. And then 
we get to sort of the climax and finale of the match. And this was great storytelling. It's Bailey and it's Becky and everyone knows Becky's going to win. They're not going to, they're not going to give it to Bailey. And so that's kind of a letdown because Becky doesn't need the title or the briefcase to be an A player while other people could benefit from that. So you're kind of watching this going, ah, crap. And then who comes up from outside the ring, but EO sky and she doesn't push the ladder over. She doesn't grab either of the girls and throw them over. She grabs the handcuffs. Both girls are on either side of the ladder. They're both climbing up. And she handcuffs the girls to one another with their hands in between the ladder, through the middle. So their arms can't go up, down, or sideways. They are both trapped and they cannot ascend the ladder any higher. They're stuck. And the crowd in London, now they know. And just like you know, if you didn't watch. Now they know who's going to win this match. And everybody felt the way I felt, which was like, wait, what? There's no way. And sure as shit, she climbs over Bailey, the girl who screwed her over, like foot on her shoulder, foot on her head, because she's stuck on the ladder. So she has to. Goes up to the top, unscrews it, and takes the money in the bank. And EO Sky has a title shot anywhere, anytime. And that's amazing because I just never saw, I never saw that coming and kudos to them for having a Japanese world champion and another Japanese girl primed to be champion. I don't think they've done that in the history of their company. A lot of times it's quota work, right? Like we've got an Asian, we've got a Mexican, we've got a Puerto Rican, we've got two black guys. Hey, look at us. And, uh, 2,700 white people. Which is, which is fine. It's your company. You can hire who you want, but it's, it can be frustrating to those that aren't in the 2700 group. So to see this was very encouraging as someone of mixed culture. I know how important it is to see people that look like you, that share your culture, share your beliefs in awesome positions on television shows. It's, it's why young Latinos loved the punch for so long because he was one of the only ones. It's why they loved my dad because he was one of the only ones. That's why they loved George Lopez for a time, because he was one of the only ones. These things are important. And when it's not common practice, it is an uncommon philosophy and seems strange. But hopefully this, for those of you who do question that kind of stuff, hopefully this helps put a different perspective and a, and a different light on it. So I was thrilled to see this. Not sure what the story is, because Charlotte seems to be in line for Asuka. And that would mean Charlotte's going to, I would say Charlotte's going to lose to Asuka because the match you want to see is EO versus Asuka. That's the match. So that to me is the match. But who knows? They might have a wonderful idea that, that I haven't had time to think of. Not that I couldn't think of, that I didn't have time to. One other thing, back to the men's money in the bank. I will say this. Logan Paul almost blew what should have been the coolest spot in the match. So there's the criticism. However. For him to be down to lose, that's awesome, dude. Kudos to you. For him to be down, for the match to go down the way it did and him get beat up like that a couple times and not have his ego and pride get in the way, but give the people what they want, kudos for that. He took a bump where he bled, man, and he showed off the blood. So shout out for that too. I love it when they show off the blood. So there's a little bit of criticism because that spot could have been so clean and crisp, but it, it was a... High level of difficulty. I wish they would have got it off. Ricochet made sure that it was going to happen no matter what. He's like, nah, dog, you're not falling. I'm super strong and I'm holding you and doing all of the work. And I got you. Wapam. And he Spanish flied him out onto some tables from the middle rope inside the ring, out of the ring. It was insane. And remember, Logan Paul is falling the whole time this is happening. And Ricochet, who is like a, a super buff cat, they can walk across power lines. It's just like, nah, dude, like, no, 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 you're not. No, I said, you're not falling. Here we go. Wow. Bam. And it looked actually pretty cool. So shout out to him for that. But EO Sky was amazing as always. She did her backflip, the blind backflip where she just climbs up, doesn't even bother looking and just freaking does a full back layout. As my daughter has corrected me many, it's not a backflip that it's a back layout, but she does it and it's awesome. And shout out to her. I'm not going to talk about the women's tag team match, although I will say I'm very glad to see it back on Raquel Rodriguez and Liv. Liv can talk pretty good on the mic, and it'll help Raquel have time to develop her skills on the mic. And it's awesome to see someone that big and strong in Raquel Rodriguez 
getting to look that big and strong. Main event, Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa versus the Uso brothers. The short of it is the Usos won the match. The long of it is it was one of the coolest kickouts ever in a match that wasn't one of the best on, on the card. But the moment was huge. My man took two finishers at the same time. Jay, that is. He took the spear and the spike. <laughs> it was so great, man. Both dudes just do the, oh, ah. It runs off the ropes. Solo's holding him. And then spike spear. I don't know what you call that. The spear Ike. The spear Ike. Wah, wah. And then one, two, three, no. And he kicked out. If you haven't seen the match, it's like I said, it's not the best, but it's still a cool match. So that's money in the bank. My match of the night was the men's money in the bank match. I thought it was awesome. I love the bumps that, that the fellas took. I didn't think LA Knight would be taking high falls like that. And he took two of them. He might have taken three of them. Santos Escobar was awesome. He was cleaning up in there. He, his look was so clean, man. I know his thing was like a Mayan warrior or something like that, but there was this Lara Croft video game. And I, you're on this like mysterious island and he looked like the, the cats you have to fight your way through to, to, to beat the game, man. He looked scary. It was cool. I liked it a lot. Anyway, hope all the wrestlers are healthy. Ladder shots hurt when you land on them, especially because they're made out of solid aluminum. But yeah, so health and good wishes to all of them. It was a fun show. I enjoy getting to watch it even at 47 years old. Stay tuned for Thursday's bonus content. As always, next week, I'll be back with Mr. Jackpot Jeff Dye. I love all y'all. Thanks for sharing the podcast. Keep giving us those follows. Give us those reviews. Keep telling your friends. Thanks for helping grow this thing. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.